Hey guys, welcome back to another Motion Raceworks Tech Tip Tuesday. Today we're talking about LS steam vent kits, specifically where to route them um, after they come out of the motor. If you're not familiar with the LS steam vent kit, the concept is pretty simple. The highest point of the cylinder heads uh, will trap steam or air hot, whatever hot area, whatever you want to call it, which can cause a dangerous tune-up. It can cause things to go lean, it can cause hot pockets, which cause detonation, and a whole variety of things. Tuners all around the world swear by these things. We've seen it firsthand, the benefits of using them, which is why we make them and sell them for a variety of applications. The important part is that you're getting the steam out. The next part is, what do you do with it? We get a lot of questions about this, so I wanted to cover it on today's episode and uh, show you on Brian's blazer so we can uh, kind of put that to rest and give you guys some ideas and direction where to go. So as I mentioned, we have these for a variety of different intakes. We have them for high ram, uh, Texas speed style intakes, Edelbrock Pro Flows. We have them for stock style intakes. We have them for LSA supercharged. We have a DIY kit. So your options are pretty uh, endless with what we have, um, but I'll show you how it goes on. Because this one is a uh, kind of a taller style intake, our solid one, our stainless steel one will work. This, uh, not, this kit not only looks really cool, but uh, is really easy to install and uh, it's pretty high flow. And it hides everything so you have no lines externally um, really running. Obviously you'd have a valley pan here. You can see that all four corner blocks, as we call them, um, are connected. So basically it's taking the steam out of the top corner of each head so that these cylinders don't become hot and run lean. At this point, fluid and steam and hot air, everything is running through all of these lines out to a common port. Um, on this stainless kit, we have a uh, just a barbed one so you can hook up a rubber hose to a stock style intake. And then you can obviously take that off, not, maybe not so obviously, and there's a 4AN um, connection underneath there. That gives you different abilities to hook up to a radiator. Where it goes next is something we get a lot of questions about and we feel strongly um, in the direction of how we want you to run it. You're basically trying to get steam out of a system. Steam's bad, uh, pressure's bad a lot of times, especially if it's highly centralized. Uh, pressure can you know, work well in a radiator um, if it's done evenly across the system, but we wanna get it out of pockets, out of corners of the system where it can cause uh, all the damage I talked about earlier. A lot of people will take this line and connect it right to the water pump because it's the closest source uh, just to kind of get rid of it, I guess, because there is coolant flowing through this, so it has to be hooked back into the cooling system somewhere. What my preference is, and what we've had the best luck with, is taking this line and running it over here uh, to just below the radiator cap. Um, the radiator cap is always going to serve as a pressure relief uh, blow off, if you will. You'll notice that this one is actually not set up yet for an LS. Um, it has the overflow, so this would need to go to an overflow can. When the, when the radiator cap moves, um, it's gonna allow, when it builds up too much pressure, it's gonna move and allow the excess pressure and the excess uh, overflow to go to overflow catch can. So you don't wanna hook it to this port on the actual radiator cap because that has to serve a purpose of going to a catch can should go to our billet catch can. What you wanna do, if your radiator isn't set, set up for an LS originally, a factory one's gonna have a secondary barb that you would run your steam vent to. And if you don't have that, you just wanna grab like an eighth inch NPT bung, you could grab a four AN male, whatever you wanna do. Drill a hole and put it right below the radiator cap. Um, what that's gonna do is that pressure that's coming out of the engine is going to go right in here in the tank and build up right below the cap so that the cap can naturally release that pressure and uh, excess as it's supposed to. That's its job. So that's where we want to put it so it's not reintroducing all of that steam and pressure back into the system. If we're trying to get rid of it, let's get rid of it effectively. So then Basically, if it builds up to a point where it needs to get rid of it, it'll put it into the catch can. Everything functions as it should at that point, and you're down the road. So just a small eighth inch NPT bung, then you can convert it to a barb and use a rubber hose if you want. You can convert it to a 4AN. Your options are pretty limitless. That's just a really simple solution. And like I said, that's where I prefer to route this to. I'm not saying your engine's gonna blow up instantly if you run it to the 
uh, water pump, but in a high performance application, that's gonna net you the best results and uh, effectively get rid of that and not reintroduce all of that back into the system. So in the end of the day, all of these steam kits, whether it's a factory style steam kit, um, they have two and four port. I always suggest using four port. Um, if it's ours, if it's somebody else's, run those to the radiator tank. You're gonna have the best results with that. In the small event that you have a rear mounted radiator in your vehicle, you're gonna have a surge tank with a radiator cap. That's where you're gonna fill your fluid and that's also gonna be what serves as your highest point pressure relief. Then you need to run it to that in a similar fashion, not to the cap again, but right below that. So hopefully that covers everybody's bases. I think this will all be beneficial for you if you're building a new project and you wanna get the most out of your cooling system and have the safest tune up. Thanks for tuning in guys. If you have comments or questions, drop them below in the comment section. We love to read what you guys have and that helps dictate what we do in the future for Tech Tip Tuesdays. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.